Shout it loud, hallelujah. A Jericho destroying, hallelujah. May the Lord God bless you real good. May the Lord God bless you real good. He brought you here to bless your life. May the Lord God bless you. Talk to somebody and shout it. May the Lord God bless you real good. Real good. May the Lord God bless you real good. Real good. He brought you here to bless your life. May the Lord God bless you real good. Talk to another person and shout it. your eyes and raise up your right hand to the heavens and decree this loud and clear say I decree by the decree of heaven that my heaven shall open by fire in the name of Jesus pray the prayer to open your heavens Jesus name we pray say I release confusion into the camp of my enemies can somebody shout that loud in the name of Jesus that's right In Jesus' name we pray. They spoke to prophet Elijah. They said, man of God, come down. And he said, no. He said of me to come down. Let fire come down. Same way, you are going to shout it loud and clear. Voices of demotion. Calling my name. Shut up! In the name of Jesus. Silence them. In Jesus' name we pray. Right there where you are. Pick any song of praises from your mouth. And sing it loud and clear to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. Amen. Say, my father, my father, my father. Can you say that again loud and clear? Visit me by your fire. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and call upon the fire. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's sing this song loud and clear from the bottom of our hearts. Holy Spirit, be my God for time. Holy Spirit, take control. Hallelujah. As I walk along the way, the way. Clear. 
Father, we thank you for a time like this before you. And we thank you for your children you have gathered at this particular Sunday service. Thank you because of the word of prophecy that has gone forth for this service. And thank you for your name which is above all names. Far above every principality and power. Far above every name that is to be named. We give you praise. This morning, lay your hands upon us in the name of Jesus. Open our understanding mightily. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In louder, amen. Bless of us, God bless you. Praise the Lord. Before we go into the word of God. This message is for all sisters who are gathered there, whether you are young or old. Please listen to me very, very carefully. As a strategic and important prayer meeting for you, immediately we close this service. And please don't go home until you have participated in that prayer. Right from the beginning of this year, until this period, for some strange reasons, so many women have died. There is a rage against the woman of all kinds of sickness some during childbirth some after surgery some breast cancer all kinds of things like that just killing off the woman but there is a facility that you can gather into your spirit man to give you a spiritual immunity it is those immunity prayers i want to pray today so all sisters here young or old you must wait after this service and participate in the prayer meeting. Praise the Lord. Let's take our Bibles, please. This morning at the school on Sunday, it's important to listen very carefully as usual. Listen to me very, very carefully to this very deep message. We're speaking on the priest with dirty garment. The priest with dirty garment. Can I hear the brothers saying so? Is that the loudest the brothers can talk? Sisters, can I hear you saying the same thing? In the book of Zechariah, Zechariah is second to the last book in the Old Testament. We see a very deep but interesting revelation. Zechariah chapter 3, I read from verse 1. Second to the last book in the Old Testament Zechariah chapter 3 if you are there say yes and he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord he was the high priest and he was standing right at the front of the angel of God then something else was happening and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him he was standing at the front of the angel of the lord he was the high priest yet satan stood there boldly resisting him i'm praying for somebody here every power resisting your prayers resisting your breakthrough resisting your prosperity resisting your testimony 
shall scatter unto desolation. In the name of Jesus. A louder amen. He was resisting. What a strange passage. I would have thought, ah, somebody before the angel of God, how possible Satan came there again to start attacking him? It's a deep revelation. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuked thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem rebuked thee. Is not this a brown pluck out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. Oh, oh. now we can understand why Satan was there to give him a fight. It was because he himself was wearing a dirty garment. And he answered and spoke unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I've caused thy iniquity to pass from thee. And I will clothe thee with change of raiment. Joshua the high priest. And don't forget that in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, the Bible calls us peculiar people, holy priesthood. So we are also priests unto God as Christians. Joshua here was a very big man. Ha! Ah, he was a big man. He was the high priest. It's difficult for the modern day man to really imagine how important the Old Testament high priest was. Unless you are a good Bible student, you will know who he was. The high priest in the Old Testament was specially called of God. You don't just walk into the position. He was consecrated to that office. They had to anoint him to become the high priest. He was a ruler of the people. He was actually next in rank to the king. He is the one who offers gifts and sacrifices. All those sacred lamps in the temple that you cannot touch. He is the one who lights the sacred lamps. He is the only man empowered to carry the sins of all the people and enter into the holy place once or twice a year to atone for the sin of the people. And that it had to do with very great caution. In fact, in that holy of holy rooms, they have, they have to attach a chain to his waist and the chain is outside so that if the angel kill him there, they can't even enter to fetch his corpse. They have to drag him out. He's a very big man. He's the one who bears the names of Israel for a memorial unto God. He's the one who inquires by Urim and Thummim, something they used to inquire information. He's the same man who consecrates Levites, the other small, small priests. He appoints offices to the Levites. Not only that, all the money that is in sacred treasury, they are in his care. Then the supreme court of law of the land, he was the presiding judge. He is the one also empowered to take the census of the people, to count people. He also blesses the people. But he was a big man. Very important man. But that did not intimidate the devil. That did not say, okay, because of that, let's leave him alone. No, no. We need to understand. And we need to move. Some people are where they are now. They just like to be there. They don't like any form of discipline. Whereas where there is no discipline, there is no progress. And this is a serious matter. That brings me back to my former primary school. We had two strange headmasters. Two strange headmasters. We had one. Looking back now, that man is a strange man. While he was with us, as our headmaster, we loved him. Oh, he was a nice man. The kind of headmaster who would be eating granuts. I said, Master, give me some, give me some. And he would take the peanuts and distribute it to our hands like this. He was very kind. He never beats people. He would just ask you to kneel down. Raise up your hand. Do frog job. But while he was our headmaster, we failed the final exam like no man's business. Then 
he left. Then they brought in this man. Looking back now, I think that man must be demonic. He does not smile. He does not play with anybody. He has no time to play games. Not at all. He goes about with two kinds of whip. He calls them Mr. Black and Mr. White. If you offend, he will ask you to pick one. And when you are in trouble with him, six strokes is the minimum he beats. After six strokes, the next is twelve. There is no seven, eight. After twelve, it's eighteen. Never smile. The former headmaster, we used to have a well at the center of the school. During the last day of the year, when they read our results to us, students who fail, they threaten to jump into the well. This old headmaster bought a huge padlock and locked up the well. The new one, the wicked one, during the last day of the term, the year, after he has read the results, we said, there we go. I've read all the results. But after listening to me, if you feel like jumping into the well, I wish to announce to you that it is open. That was the man he was. But Dorin is ten up. We passed seriously. It is known that people really do well when there is no pressure. If there is no exam, some people will not read any book. But one thing is certain. I don't know whether they still do it now. When we were in school in those days, if they give you mathematics to do, they give you five sums to do. You got three right. You got two wrong. Our teachers in those days, they would take their chalk and do correction. They would write all the five on the blackboard. And then they would ask you to do correction of the one you got wrong. You copy it and they mark it. Why are they interested in what you got wrong? Because it is not what you do right that will get you into trouble. It is what you get wrong that will get you into trouble. Many of us, listen to me carefully this morning. This is a message of correction. It's not what you do right that will cause trouble for you. Say, I try my best, I come to church, I'm praying the prayers, I'm doing this, I'm doing that by the grace of God, I'm living a clean life. That's right. It's good. All those right, right things you are doing, you not get you into trouble. It's the wrong one. That's what the Bible says. If you say you don't steal, you don't kill, you don't commit fornication, you don't commit adultery, say, but you gossip. Say, because you gossip, you are guilty of all those other sins. So it's not what you do rather right gets into trouble. Whether you are a big man, you are a spiritual VIP, even you are a geo, you are a bishop, you are a senior pastor, you are anything, you are a group leader. It is possible for you to continue the work of God although you are wearing a filthy garment. You could be singing, you could be an usher. Could be doing any work for God in the church. It is possible to be doing those things. Although you are wearing a dirty garment. Remember, Joshua was the only person who could enter into the Holy of Holies. He continued his service as if all was well. The point I'm trying to make you understand this morning is this. I want you to take action now, now, now. A corrective action. So that your filthiness will not be announced to people to see before you address it. I'm telling you now that this is the point to make some corrections. Because if you don't correct it, that filthiness that has been hiding and nobody knows you are, you are masturbating now. Nobody knows you are watching pornography, but you, you know you are watching it. Nobody can decode the lies you are telling, but you, you know you are telling it. The serious point I'm trying to make this money is this. Don't wait for that filthiness to be announced in the world. And for the public to see what you have been doing in secret. Before you address it now. You may think you are very clever. But no. You are not cleverer than the devil. Do not wait until that thing you are hiding displays you like this. Don't wait till it displays you. The first time I will see... When I was very young, I didn't used to believe those things that I used to hear that happens, that they used to tell us. They told us that time 
that there's a particular juju power, a fetish power, that they can put on a woman. And if the man who is not her husband goes into her, they will glue together. And you can't separate them. And by the time they separate them, the man will die. I used to think it was fiction. We were there. How about Macaulay Street where I was living? This man went into another man's wife, not knowing that the man had put that fetish power on the woman. They glued. They started screaming. People brought both of them out naked. They put them on wheel, wheelbarrow, wheelbarrow, wheelbarrow. They were now looking for the native doctor along that area that will separate them. Unfortunately, my spiritual knowledge was not good enough to do anything. If it is now, I know what prayer to separate them. But that time I didn't know, I just watch it. Naked man, naked woman, glued together. Then the point of disgrace came. When his wife came, a civil servant, she has gone to work. The man has no work. It's the woman feeding him. They brought the woman from office. He said, Ha, ah, Baba Kende, this is your life. Ah, you are finished. You are finished. I'm packing out. I'm packing out. The woman was crying. The man was crying. If he had addressed it, because those kind of things don't happen in a day. There is no sudden fall, sudden sin. No. There is no accidental fornication. It's a lie. If he had addressed it, it would become a public show that it became. Hear me and hear me well today. Those of you who are playing games around, you will remember this message. That I warned. I warned that correct your life now before the devil places you on display. The fact that everything is working the way you like it now does not mean that your garments are not dead. There is a big difference between how God sees you and how you appear before God. Joshua was offering incense. Although he was offering incense before God, another odor, another odor was entering the nose street of God. The odor from his dirty garments. The filthy garments was an another odor unto the nostrils of God. And because of that, the devil confidently stood there and began to oppose him. Began to oppose him. Began to oppose him. Began to oppose him. To oppose him. No wonder that songwriter says, Lay aside that garment that is stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lord. Lay it, lay it aside and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Filthy garments is what brings opposition. And opposition will hinder your progress. So you sort out yourself now before it is too late. Angels came twice to prepare for Samson. Samson has just left the house of a harlot. And they said, Samson, Philistines are here. Although he had just left the house of a harlot, he still carries sufficient power to fight the Philistines and disgrace them. You can be saying you are working for God. You are doing this, you are doing that. You are doing all kinds of things. But your garments are dirty. This is why the enemy is opposing you. I want to pray one prayer now. Those who understand the prayer, they will say the loudest amen they can say. Any garment upon your spirit man that is attracting satanic opposition, I destroy them now in the name of Jesus. There is an old saying that said the clothes make the man. The idea here is that your garment says a lot about you. But while the world may concern itself with what a man wears on the outside, God is far more concerned with what a person wears on the inside. The Bible says God look at not the way the man looks. So spiritually speaking, as you are listening to me this morning, you are wearing a garment. But I don't know what kind of garment it is. The high priest is standing before God and before the angel of God and Satan was accusing him. That high priest is a representative of man, an accurate picture of how we to appear before God. And this was a serious problem. For example, there are occupational uniforms. Athletic attire. There's a nursing uniform. We call them occupational. In the physical. 
Some people can wear proud clothes. Although say I like color people king, all of the wear flamboyant clothes. Some wear liberal clothes. Clothes that lacks liberal, clothes that lack inhibition, rebellious clothing. Some wear seduction clothes. Because the sex appeal is the strongest motive of all in satanic designing organization. Most of the clothes they design for women is for sexual appeal to, to appeal for sex. Clothes that arouse, that exposes the body and arouses sexual uh, desire, uh, they are clothes that the enemy has designed. All those very tight clothing, dangerous miniskirts, slits, dresses with serious cleavage, they are communicating a message. The message of a fallen world and the message that your, there is a problem inside of you. That you are spiritually sick. Sick. They may not tell you. They may say, oh, it is beautiful. Fantastic. Gorgeous. But that's what they are saying. But in heaven, it stinks in the nostrils of God. You must have heard a couple of times that you shall be addressed as you are dressed. So clothes are not just merely objects to cover up ourselves. It's not merely items of self-decoration. Your clothes are a sort of business cards telling them who you are. They speak. Several passages in the Bible talks about royal apparel. In Proverbs 17, we read what the Bible calls the attire of an harlot. That is the styles, the costumes of a harlot. Clothes that announce their trade. It announces the trade of the wearer without the wearer saying one word. When you see somebody dressing one kind, nobody needs to tell you what she wants to advertise. A queen could not be arrayed in the attire of an harlot. A harlot seeking for cleanse on the street will not present herself as a dignified dresser. If somebody stands on the street and is dressing like a queen and she says, I'm a harlot, nobody will believe her. So your clothes say so much about who you are. Whether you are tidy, whether you are careful, whether you are dirty, whether you are loud, whether you are a harlot, whether you are poor, whether you are rich, whether you are a soldier, whether you are a policeman, whether you are a nurse, whether you are a student, whether you are a priest. Those clothes will tell so much about you. And if you do not know, it is the same thing in the spirit realm. The truth is this, and this is why we are going before we start praying now. Until the satanic garment covering a man is removed. His deliverance can never, never be complete because the enemy will always be opposing you. That garment of sin you are putting on, and you are clever with it, it will hinder you from prospering in the service of God and will limit the manifestation of the power of God. That evil garment that we cannot see, but the enemy can see, God too can see, gives Satan authority over a child of God. Over a child of God. He will give him authority over a child of God. Every negative garment upon a life of a person will paralyze the power of the Holy Spirit. You can see that Joshua was just standing there silently. He couldn't say one word. His garment had silenced him. It will take a white garment from heaven to prosper a man in ministry. The time has come, like blind Bartimaeus, threw away that garment. When they said Jesus was calling him, and his beggarly garment was disturbing him, the Bible said he threw them away. Try it there where you are. I command you in the name of Jesus to tear off every evil garment in your body in the name of Jesus. Every evil garment in your spirit, man, I tear them off in the name of Jesus. There will be no manifestation of the kingdom power without the garment of glory replacing that garment. The physical garment of Jesus is personality mixed. Jesus asked a question. Who touched me? Who was the garment the woman touched? Not the physical body of Jesus. So who 
touched me. He didn't say, who touched my garment? Me stand for his person. What he says he is and what heaven says he is. So there was no difference between the physical garment of Jesus and the person of Jesus spiritually. There is a throne meant for your life. But you cannot wear a rag on your body and get on that throne. Every king on the throne wears royal garments. Remember when Elijah called Elisha. Elisha tore his old garment. The garment of servanthood. Garment of tradition. Garment of old mentality. My prayer this morning. That the angels that change it garment will visit you in the name of Jesus. I said the angel that change it garment will visit you in the name of Jesus. May you encounter your angels of breakthrough. May you encounter your angels of blessings. May you not encounter the wicked angels. In the name of Jesus. The Lord has an agenda. The agenda is that he's looking for people he will use in this generation. People he will demonstrate the power of God through their lives. It's important for you to understand this. Joshua had his priestly garment on, but it was filthy. That garment that the Bible is talking about is a revelation about the character of the wearer. God himself was first tailor in the Bible. And so garments physically and spiritually are important. Garments have voices they speak. The clothes you wear physically communicates a message. What you wear signals who you are. Your clothes speak a body language. If you saw a girl with her breasts half pushing out, topless blouses, terrible skirts, you can't say, ah, she's a priest. No. If you saw a man with a pastoral collar on his neck, you won't say, ah, this man is a nurse. If you saw a gorgeous lady with a crown on her head, he will say this is the housemaid. But if you find that person with the breast pushing out, the skirts are very dangerous, painted all over, but she's the one you find on the altar, you won't allow her to lay hands on you. You will wonder whether you're in the right church. So everyone says a lot by the way they dress. Joshua was wearing a dirty garment. That alone attracted Satan. So spiritual filthiness, sin, corruption, it attracts Satan. It's like a magnet. It brings evil. It brings bad odor. It brings sin. It brings death, which is the wages of sin. And wherever you find a dead body, it won't be long before you see maggots too. So those filthy garments spiritually must be removed. Any Christian with a known sin in their life is like Joshua, powerless in rebuking Satan. A dirty priest is an insult to God. May we not wear what the Bible calls filthy rags in the name of Jesus. This garment that you have inside, that is giving the devil authority over you, may that authority be revoked this day in the name of Jesus. I was invited many years ago to the meeting of some pastors, top, top pastors. And I asked the Lord, these big men who are here, what should I talk to them about? He said, talk to them about the fat priest. Fat priest. Eli was a priest. Eli was very fat. Fat from feeding on the offering and the sacrifices. Eli fell down and broke his neck. He was, was too fat. And I began to tell them, when you are pay, pay useless visit to church members' houses, you are a fat priest. You are stealing God's money, fat priest. Pastor, you have girlfriend, fat priest. You are begging for food, fat priest. And I began to tell them all these things. Pastor, borrowing money from church members. Pastor cannot pay back the money. So anytime you see the pulpit, he's afraid. Because they have written letter that will embarrass him on the pulpit. It's a fat priest with dirty garment. Are you here today? And you know inside, there are things you need to correct. You need to address. 
and he did address them just like david when david killed uriah and took his wife god waited for nine months so let me see whether he will address it david just did business as usual he didn't take any action but at the ninth month prophet nathan turned up in the palace he said king there are two people in your kingdom one has thousands of sheep the other one had only one the man who had thousands of sheep went and took the sheep of the man who had one and killed it david said what in my kingdom no 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 the man who did that should die and the prophet said thou at the man thou at the man he did not address it he waited until he was publicly displayed and since that incidence of Uriah's wife the curses God put on David is still working on Israel and Jerusalem now he said there shall be no peace in his house his own children will rise against him he should curses on him although he forgave him the greatest danger now that if you do not address this strange garment you have inside you are coming to mountain of fire we thank God what you know inside so all, all is not well revival is not in your spirit fire is not in that spirit it's envy gossip all kinds of things in the spirit finally that garment will take you to hell fire where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth a place of outer darkness a place of torment a place of sorrow a place of everlasting destruction a place where men are tormented with fire and brimstone the bottomless pit a place where the fire is not quenched it's not worth it to come here and then go there all because you refuse to take correction 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 which the holy ghost is asking you to make this is the prayer for this morning it's a serious situation we must ask god to take off our spiritual garments and take them to his laundry and dry clean them and bring them back to us rise to your feet now all eyes closed in case you are here this morning and you have not just surrendered your life to jesus you have a good opportunity to do so now right there where you are tell the lord to forgive you your sins and say what i'm going to say after me so father the name of jesus i come before you now lord jesus come into my life in jesus name amen right there where you are there are prayers to pray very serious prayers aggressive prayers this is some of the most useful prayers any christian can pray pray it with fire and with power pray it with all your strength before you start that prayer right there where you are confess your sins to the lord tell him to forgive you tell him that he has to help you today talk to him have you been to jesus for that cleansing power are you washed in the blood of the lamb are you fully trusting in his grace this is our are you were in the blood of the lamb are you are your garments spotless are they white as snow are you in the blood of the lamb three prayers to pray let nobody's voice be louder than yours particularly if you are interested in the issues of your destiny say this loud and clear garments of darkness in my spirit man die in the name of jesus Something is going on already. (laughs) 
Basanteli kaya bo shendera ba. In Jesus name we pray. The second garment to destroy is a garment that you must destroy with fire and with power. Garment of reproach. In the name of Jesus. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. The third garment is this. Garment of failure. You are a liar. Die. In the name of Jesus. Jesus name we pray Garment of obedience Come upon my life now In the name of Jesus Thank you Jesus Thank you Jesus Thank you Jesus Amen. Now that you members of the choir are the frontier, all of you will open your mouth and sing this song twice for congregation to hear and for those two who should repent to hear. Oba bora, oba. One more time. we come before you now lay your hands upon us change our garments to glory cast away all the filthy garments any garment that is causing opposition by the enemy we shake them off in the name of Jesus thank you Lord stretch your right hand towards this altar here and let your amen be dynamic as a prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. These hands that are stretched here. 
Let them become the hands of restoration. The hands of power. The hands of strength. The hands of deliverance. The hands of glory. In the name of Jesus. Lay that hand on your chest now. Lay that hand on your chest. And shout this prayer louder than anyone around you. Please don't let anybody's voice be louder than yours. Garments! Inviting problems into my life. Cash fire! In the name of Jesus. Baptenderebo ni katali katanda. Thank you, Jesus. Masi katende ya boshenta. Garments inviting problems into my life. Catch fire! Catch fire! Catch fire! Jesus name we pray one more garment prayer before we go this one will bring breakthroughs to your life if you pray to it I wear the garment of power by the power in the blood of Jesus open your mouth and decrease I wear the garment of power by the power in the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. I saw one in this service. You came here crying. I have news for you. By the time you get home from this service, your point of crying will have been converted to testimonies. The Lord blesses you from Zion. Make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Father, answer this prayer request by your fire. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In louder amen. Let us share the grace in fellowship. Seven Goliath destroying, hallelujah, let's go. Amen. Sisters, please gather quickly into the auditorium here. Very, very quickly. It's going to be a short meeting. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is a winner man. Jesus is a winner man. Jesus is a winner man. A winner man all the time. Jesus, Jesus is a winner man. Winner man. Jesus is a winner man. Winner man. Jesus is a winner man. A winner man all the time. Winner man. Winner man. Winner man. Winner man. Winner man. I am on the winning side. I am on the winning side. I am on the winning side. The winning side all the time. Winning side, winning side, winning side, winning side, winning side, winning side, winning side.
Win inside, win inside, win inside. No win inside. No, no. By the reason of our night, every yoke must be broken. Down. By the reason of our night, every yoke must be Every yoke must be broken by the reason of a noise. Every yoke, every yoke must be broken. Every yoke must be broken by the reason of a noise. Every yoke, every yoke must be broken. Every yoke must be broken by the reason of a noise. Every yoke, every yoke must be broken. Every yoke must be broken by the reason of a noise. Every yoke, every yoke must be broken. Every yoke must be broken by the reason of a noise. the immunity prayers if you pray these prayers and you lose your voice and you collect immunity that's all thank god for your lives glory be to the name of jesus we pray these prayers now and then we share the grace and go can you shout this louder than anyone around you honors of the lord of tragedy i am not your candidate In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and decree it loud and clear. Owners of the Lord of Tragedy, I am not your candidate. Carry your load. Carry your load. Carry your load. Carry your load. In Jesus, then we pray. I say, sister over there, the witchcraft power of your grandmother actually planted something in your body. And the thing is moving close to killing you. Right there where you are, the power of God is coming upon you. That yoke is broken. As the person over there. Yes. The material is coming out. This second prayer if you are afraid, don't pray it. Don't pray it at all. Outsort witchcraft! Your time is up! Down! In the name of Jesus! 
That's right. Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. Masapeli Kayabo Shanta. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh huh. I'm getting somewhere. You will now shout this. This is number three. Any hidden sickness in my body. In the name of Jesus. Something is happening over there. Receive the touch of the power of God. Receive the touch of the power. Basapiali Kata. Yes, let the arrows of infirmity go back. Go back to the senders. In Jesus, then we pray. Stretch your right hand towards this altar. Father, let this hand collect fire. Fire of protection. Fire of healing. Fire of immunity. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to count seven from here. And you smite where I ask you to smite. Once you smite that place, if there is any sickness there, hidden or open, it will depart. Seven. We start with the edge. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Now go to your, 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 your chest. Make sure your hand touches your breast as you smite it. One. Yes. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Yes, every arrow in the breast is going out. Now go to your stomach. I told you this is an immunity prayer meeting. It is written that as soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. Strangers shall submit themselves unto me. The strangers shall fade away and they shall be afraid out of their close places. The strangers in the tummy, they are about to go now. The one in the kidney, they are about to go now. One, do it well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Aha. Now go to your womb area. Your womb area now. Get yourself ready. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Aha. Now your right leg. Your right leg. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The left leg now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Aha. 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 You will now pray this serious prayer. Sickness unto death. I am not your candidate. My family is not your candidate. Die! In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth, open your mouth. That's why you are here. Ma pata sepeli katelaka. Riba sepende kayaba. Ma nakandara bo sepende kayabo shenteraba. In Jesus' name we pray. Several hot times we shout this. I shall not die but live. To declare the works of the Lord. Shout it seven times. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. Aha. Say blood of Jesus Laminate my life 
in the name of Jesus. Yes, in Jesus' name we pray. Finally, before you go, thank you for praying those prayers. And I thank God for your life that you waited for this prayer meeting. By your waiting, the overshadowing cover of God will rest permanently upon your life in the name of Jesus. Say, powers that wants me to die, destroy yourself in the name of Jesus. They shall destroy themselves. 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 In the name of Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. Now 21 times you are going to shout blood of Jesus. When you now get to number 21 you will say overshadow my life 21 times. Let's go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you are that woman here, some time ago when you had trouble, they actually asked you to sleep inside a coffin. Please run quickly to this altar and be on your knees. Because a long time ago, you actually slept inside a coffin. Find a way to the altar very quickly. The Lord wants to do wonders in your life today. Get on your knees when you get to the altar. Deliverance ministers, where are you? We need you here very quickly with your oil. Just anoint them. Makatenda ya boshantia. Ribo sepia ni katenda ka. Manakantenda raba. Bashinta raba santa. Aha. Yes. That's Sister Agbola inside this meeting. I don't know where you are, but hear this word. The congregation of witchcraft from your place of birth that wants you to die shall be scattered in 24 hours. Yes, once they are anointed, they can go back to their seats. That's all. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, it is written that your daughters here shall to the hills raise up their head. Oh, there comes their heart. The hype comes to the Lord who made them most You will not suffer their feet to be moved. But the keeper they will not slumber. The keeper children shall end up slumber and sleep. The Lord shall keep your going and your coming out. The Lord shall keep you in all your ways. No evil shall be for you. No evil shall be for you. No evil shall be for you. No you. Neither shall any play come near your camp. It is well with you. Now, I want to pray for 21 women here who are supposed to be billionaires, but the enemy just swallows their money. My punter, le kater. You, that woman over there, every money you have lost within the next one week, 
Repossess them in the name of Jesus. Repossess them. Repossess them. Repossess them. Repossess them. Repossess them. Repossess them. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, King of Kings. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us share the grace in fellowship.